Hi, I'm John Underhill. Welcome to Underhill Creations. As a woodworker, a resin caster, and a pen maker, I've always been obsessed with, with obtaining that perfect finish. I found Glue Boost. I never looked back. If you've used it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, just when I thought things couldn't get any better or easier, Rick and the team at Glue Boost came up with a little surprise. They came out with a new product, Fill and Finish Ultra Thin. Why do I like it? Because it's a perfect scratch filler for a base coat or a final coat on that CA finish. Uh, it's also a sealer for surface and end grain against moisture or debris when you're doing wet sanding. And it's a perfect stabilizer during turning of soft woods or if you're turning an object that's cast in resin and you're worried about a blowout, this stuff will help hold everything in place. Now because this stuff is so thin, ultra thin as the label says, I like to use these little wick stems on them. They, they push right down over the top and it allows you to get in them tight little areas without accidentally dumping the whole bottle on there. You'll definitely want to stock up on these. They're a great thing to have. Let me show you how I use it. So one of the first things we have to be concerned about when we're prepping a blank to turn on the lathe is we have to worry about the end grain. Now these have already been milled down flush with the tubes so what I want to do is I want to seal because this is a feather blank I don't want any moisture or sanding debris to get wicked inside of the feathers or along the edge of them so what I want to do is I'm going to take some ultra thin and I'm going to put it around the edges and it's going to wick in and it's going to seal that tube so that nothing can get between the tube and, and the clear resin. Remember the clear resin is going to magnify anything that gets under it so we want to make sure that's protected. Secondly, I want to seal the wood the same way. So this end grain here because when I apply my, turn this down and apply my finish to the surface, the last thing I want is any moisture or debris to wick underneath my clear finish after I'm done applying that. All right, here we have a piece of red oak burl. Now, as you can see, red oak is always prone. When you get a burl, you'll have all these little micro cracks in there. And you'll see them from the sanding because they'll get filled with a little bit of dust. But what you want to do is seal that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a paper towel and I roll it up and then flatten it. And I'm going to turn the lathe on. We're spinning about 800 RPMs. Now I'm just going to apply a little bit to the paper towel and I'm going to work across. Give it a light spray of the glue dry. and I'm going to wait for about 20 or 30 seconds. I'm going to make sure that that gets in where I want. Now, as you look, you'll see the crack disappears because the sanding dust is gone, but it doesn't mean it's all the way filled. So you're going to want to do that a couple of times. And if you're really concerned with something that's really deep, then come in here and just squeeze a little bit on the surface and you'll watch how that wicks in and disappears. You can kind of use that, that stem to direct it where you want it. And that way I know it's wicking in as deep as it can to fill that little crack and void. Just a light mist of glue dry and we're good to go. Now what I'm going to do is I would apply maybe one or two more coats of the Ultra Thin and then over the top of that I would switch to the orange label, fill and finish and put four or five layers and finish my pen. Now if you've ever applied a CA finish to a pen, you'll notice sometimes you start to get some ridges on here from the lathe turning as you apply the glue. And one thing we'll do is we'll use some 600 grit or 400 grit sandpaper, we'll sand it off, and then I like to turn the lathe on high, and then I'll use some steel wool, extra fine steel wool as the lathe's spinning, and kind of knock down all that and make it smooth. But it still introduces scratches into our finish. So here's where the ultra thin fill and finish comes in handy. I like to use ultra thin both as a base coat before I start my CA finish and as a final scratch filler after I've leveled it out and removed any ridges. It fills in them scratches, makes everything nice and smooth, and now I'm ready to move towards micro mesh and polishing.
Now what I really like about this stuff is it's great for a stabilizer. If you're turning blanks that have embedded objects in it like pine cones, um, maybe popcorn kernels or, or cherry pits, during the turning process you're going to have little bits and pieces flying out at you. You're going to have to worry about whether or not you can turn it without a blowout. So what helps is to stop and saturate the blank with uh, ultra thin while you're turning it and then turn it down a little bit and when you start seeing pieces fly out again stop and put more ultra thin on that'll help you get to a desired thickness and then you can build your finish on top of it without blowing up the blank you've probably experienced where some of them have blown out on you colored pencils are another thing but as you can see here because i would stop during the turning process uh you know every maybe three different times during the turning process even more so as i got down to the finish size I would saturate it with a little bit of uh, ultra thin it wicks in around everything holds it all in place and now I'm ready to build my finish on top of that so I'm gonna start again I'm using a bounty paper towel and I've folded it in, in half I've rolled it up and then I flatten it and so I use this kind of as a as a long wand and I start at the tip and work my way back I'm gonna set my lathe again around seven eight hundred Whatever's best comfortable for you, I'm going to apply. I'm going to apply a little bit to the tip here, and I'm just going to work my way across this blank. Give it a quick shot, and now you can see the shines. It's going to wick in around all them seeds. It's going to seal everything, hold them in tight, and I'm going to do that two or three times to really get any cracks that might be around this sealed. And then I'm going to build up my my finish. All right, so I've applied uh, about five layers of the medium, and then I put on a couple layers of the uh, thin, which is the orange label. Uh, that way it was able to level everything out, but obviously if you've applied a glue boost finish, you know sometimes you have to go over with a little bit of sandpaper. So I took 600 grit, and I turned the lathe on, and I, I smoothed all this out, but now I have some fine scratches in there. So I can obviously micro mesh it and polish it and try to get all them scratches out, but the quickest solution for me now is to use some fill and finish ultra thin. And I'm going to put a couple layers on there. I like to, to apply it while the lathe is turning. I use less glue and I cover a bigger area. And I also like to use the glue dry white spinning because it covers the blank while it's turning. And now you can already see it's, I've got a really good shine going. The scratches are going to be filled. And now I'm ready to micro mesh wet sand and polish. And she'll be ready to assemble. If you turn a lot of acrylics like I do, you've probably noticed not all of them shine or finish as easy as the others. And this is because not all acrylics are made the same. Uh, your commercial grade acrylics are much harder. Uh, as are some of your polyester resins, custom casts. So they're going to finish a little easier because it's a harder resin. Uh, your epoxies and urethanes are a little softer, so you're going to have to work harder. Now you can either spend all your time buffing and polishing and micro meshing, or you can apply a glue boost finish to it and you'll be done in five minutes. So what I like to do is this. After I get the blank turned down and the surface is, is level and smooth from sanding and steel wool, I'll apply three or four coats of this new fill and finish ultra thin. Like before, it fills all the scratches, makes the surface nice and smooth, but it also starts to build up a protective layer. Now what a lot of people don't realize is your resins will dull with normal use because it's softer. But if you apply a glue boost finish over the top of that, now you've got a hard surface that you can easily wipe down with a dry cloth after daily use of that pen and bring back that shine. It'll hold up much longer. It'll be more durable than the resin itself. So to give you a better example of what I'm talking about, when I apply a glue boost finish over top of resin, this blank, I turned down, I prepped the, the, the entire blank the same way. I sanded it, I steel wooled it, and then on side A, I left uh, naked resin and on side B I applied a glue boost finish. I applied uh, four layers of the new fill and finish ultra thin. I then micro meshed the entire blank, wet sanded it, and then I buffed it. 
and as you can see so both still have a shine but side A the naked resin is a little duller the colors aren't as vibrant and you can still see some some fine scratches in there from the sanding on side B with the ultra thin fill and finish you can see the colors are more bold everything shinier smoother and it's a much harder surface so it will hold up with day-to-day -day use much longer than the naked resin well what do you think looks pretty easy that's because it is glue boost is easy to use not only does it give you a high durable quality finish but it also saves you a ton of time in your finishing process so if you haven't tried it give their fill and finish products a try and for those of you that are using it wait till you get some of this you're gonna love it Rick Thank you and the team for coming up with the new product. I'm going to be using a lot of it. I'm John Underhill. Thanks for watching.